Good afternoon. Welcome to the March 2021 meeting of the Community Planning and Preservation Commission for the City of St. Petersburg. This commission reviews proposed changes to the comprehensive plan, land use and zoning, as well as historic preservation related proposals and makes recommendations to the City Council. To help prevent the spread of COVID-19 and protect our more vulnerable members of the community, the City of St. Petersburg will hold community planning and preservation commission meetings in person. All individuals in any city facility will be required to comply with the public safety protocols recommended by the Center for D Disease Control and Prevention and local health authorities, including wearing a mask in common areas, maintaining six feet of distance and other safety practices. Our agenda today includes quasi-judicial and public hearing items. The quasi-judicial items on our agenda will require the following quasi-judicial process. Anyone speaking before the commission on a quasi-judicial item will be sworn in by the clerk located next door in the greenhouse prior to speaking. Staff, the applicant, and the registered opponent each have 10 minutes for their presentation. After the presentation, each member of the public who wishes to address the commission will have three minutes to speak after being sworn in by the clerk located in the greenhouse. We ask that you make your remarks brief and not repetitive of prior testimony. After the remarks, we will ask that you please wait outside or remain in the hallway if there are fewer than six people and you can maintain a distance of six feet from others. After the public hearing, staff, the applicant, and any registered opponent will each have five minutes of cross-examination of anyone who spoke during the, this item, and then five minutes each for rebuttal or closing comments. We ask, again, that each member of the public stay outside in the hallway, conditions permitting for possible rebuttal by staff, the applicant, or registered opponent. During cross-examination, all questions are to be directed to me as chair. I will in turn redirect the questions to the appropriate person for response. At the conclusion of these steps, the commission will enter into executive session. Commissioners may ask questions at any time during the quasi-judicial process upon being recognized by the chair. All procedural questions are to be directed to me as chair. Lastly, once the commission has voted on your item, we ask that you continue conversations outside. This will allow us to safely move forward with your fellow St. Petersburg citizens, CPPC Matters. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation in these very confusing times. Okay, um, let's start with a roll call. Sure. Bill? Gertis? Present. Rogo? Here. Whiteman? Yes. Winters? Here. Wolf? Here. Burke? Michaels? Here. Wanamaker. Here. We have a quorum. All right. And if we could, let's please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, has everybody had the opportunity to review the February minutes? Any questions, concerns? Do we have a motion? Move approval. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, I like it. Okay, so at this point, we will move into our quasi-judicial public hearing. Uh, Commissioner Wanamaker. Agenda item number one is city file number oh, one. Oh, sorry. I did something wrong. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, it, we wanted to just make a presentation up at the front about one of the items on the agenda, and that is the rehearing request 20-9020126. Uh, For anybody that's watching, that item was removed from the agenda. Uh, that's been resolved between uh, the city and the applicant, and we can explain that in updates at the end of the agenda if you have any questions. Okay, great. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. What number was that? The last, uh, last item on the agenda. The rehearing request. Okay. 209 Correct. <laughs> okay. So agenda item number one is city file number 19-9030002. The request is for the designation 
of the Kenwood Section, Southwest Central Kenwood Local Historic District to the St. Petersburg Register of Historic Places. There are multiple owners, and this is a privately initiated application certified by city ballot process. Thank you. Ms. Duvacott from the city. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Laura Duvacott, historic preservationist for the city of St. Petersburg. And we have case number 19903 uh, which is noted is an owner initiated application for a listing of an area that contains 150 parcels um, as a local historic district in the St. Petersburg Register of Historic Places. Um, city staff has received uh, two letters of support, one of which was forwarded um, and one which was handed out uh, to you. Um, this proposed district is entirely within the Kenwood National Register Historic District, which was listed uh, to the National Register in 2003. Um, and this is the fourth application for a local historic district designation of a significant portion of the National Register District, um, and it would join the Southeast Kenwood, Seminole Park, and Northwest Kenwood uh, sections. Um, so here is just a general timeline um, of the application. Uh, this has been going on since 2019. Um, the initiation process, uh, since it was owner initiated, began with a public uh, information meeting uh, where the city answered questions that property owners had. Um, the city then distributed ballots um, and received a majority um, of, the, of the properties uh, indicating support of the application for moving forward. Um, the application materials were submitted in late January of 2020, um, marking the application complete. Um, and then our COVID delays started, so this has been an active application for quite a while, as you can see, um, in order to then make sure that all property owners had an opportunity to get education directly from the city about the process. Um, a second public information meeting was held in February of 2021. Uh, this one was held virtually. Um, and then today we are at that final bullet point, which is the CPPC. Um, also in that, uh, during that time, um, city staff has been conducting uh, certificates of appropriateness um, and some have been brought to this commission. Um, staff has processed almost 30 COAs for uh, the subject area uh, during the time that the, com that the application has been complete and active. Um, so here's a map showing the proposed area. It's bound by 26th and 28th streets uh, and 1st and 5th avenues north. Um, the properties facing the 1st Avenue North corridor have been excluded from the proposed district to re uh, reflect both changing use um, as it is now um, a commercial area and also diminished integrity along that corridor. Um, so to summarize the significance, uh, resources generally date to three periods of construction. Um, the uh, 1920s land boom, which is the interwar um, period of construction. Craftsman is most common and really uh, defines the significance of this district. Um, but there are also numerous frame vernacular homes from this era, uh, era that uh, add to the character. Um, and then we have depression and post-depression, uh, which includes minimal traditional and Tudor revival. Um, and that period was ended by a halt in re uh, residential construction in 1941 um, because of the beginning of World War II. And then there are a number of post-World War II, uh, mostly masonry vernacular and more modern influenced homes um, that were built in the early post-war years. Um, the three non-residential um, properties that are within the proposed district also date to this period of construction, which includes um, the church seen, seen above, as well as two commercial buildings. Um, so these are the criteria for eligibility uh, for listing in the St. Petersburg Register um, of Historic Places that are met by the application. Um, staff finds that uh, the proposed district um, is eligible um, because it meets uh, criteria A, E, F, G, and H. Um, there are nine criteria for eligibility that are used to evaluate uh, potential local uh, districts and, and landmarks. Um, the proposed district is found to meet those related to its cultural significance in the area of community planning development, its architectural significance, and its significance as a concentration of united resources. When we evaluate uh, proposed landmarks and districts, we also evaluate historic integrity. A resource must demonstrate at least one factor of historic integrity to be considered for listing. 
The proposed district um, retains uh, six of the seven factors, which are location, design, setting, materials, workmanship, and feeling. Um, as part of the designation of historic districts, properties are noted to be either contributing or non-contributing. Um, this, uh, this shows that the majority of the properties are noted as contributing. Um, this designation application is also consistent with the city's comprehensive plan relating to the protection, use, and adaptive reuse of historic buildings. The designation will not affect the future land use map or zoning designations, um, and staff recommends approval of the designation of the Southwest Central Kenwood Local Historic District to be forwarded to City Council for public hearing and final determination. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Um, the applicant, uh, I believe, uh, or an applicant's representative is also here to speak, and I am available for any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Ucott. So there are, there are multiple owners, so will we hear from all owners that are present? Um, there is one agent, um, Brenda Gordon, who will be speaking um, on everybody's behalf. Thank you. Ms. Gordon. Here is fine, I think. Is that okay? I, need to, uh, I have some slides, so. We'll okay. Um, Do those look it? That's that yeah. the clerk controls, right? She, she can, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So you can do, you go okay. right there. Cool. If you need an overhead, it's over there. But. No, I don't. No, I just, okay, I'll tell her when next. And Ms. Gordon, you've been sworn in? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You have 10 minutes. Okay, I've got it. Um, I'm, oh, here. Which one do I flip? This one, okay. All right, I'm Brenda Gordon, and I live in historic Kenwood, and I'm one of the 19 writers of the uh, application that we sent and has been accepted by, by you guys. Our coordinators are Alec and Jen Smith, who were the true leaders of this effort. They can't attend. Their parents are very, very frail, and being anywhere in person, they're afraid to do. Uh, typically, uh, we would have this room packed. This is our fourth application for a local historic district, and we usually have 20 or 30 people here, but again, because of COVID concerns, we're not. This district has already been stated as part of the overall historic Kenwood, which is listed on the National Register. We were the first development uh, for year-round homes and were bought by the working class people of historic Kenwood. So while our homes are modest in scale and design, they have been planned for charm and cohesiveness. Um, to us, local designation provides, whoops, provides a tool to help retain the neighborhood character and keep our neighborhood special. Just as an example, what you saw on the previous slide were our street signs, and here you see our pavilion, which 30 plus years ago were built by hundreds of neighbors, volunteers who worked on this. Fast forward a few years, and we have been lucky to win a number of national awards for our social and physical revitalization efforts. And then we got the Mac Daddy of all awards, which is the National Neighborhood of the Year for the entire country for our uh, success with our public art initiative. Sadly, with COVID, we haven't been able to do all the cool stuff we usually do, which is our Pinot in the Park, our Bungalow Fest, our picnics, even our Artist Enclave studio tours. But I will let you all know that we're going to have an outdoor Bungalow Fest in November. It'll be an art and garden tour. So uh, save your 20 bucks and you can come. Um, we were also going to celebrate this past year our 30th anniversary as a neighborhood association and do some more celebration of our public art. But looking forward to everybody getting vaccinated and uh, herd immunity, we uh, will be looking forward to doing more outdoors things in the upcoming months. You've already seen what the boundaries are that Laura provided to you. But I would, did want to uh, reiterate that 95% of the properties in this proposed district are uh, contributory to, on the National Register. This is Alec and Jen's house. Whenever they bought it, it was god awful, I have to say. It was horrible green, it had jealousy windows closed in, it was rotten, everything you can think. And they took the time to totally renovate something that many people might say to tear down. So the types of buildings that we have in this local historic district are single family homes, and we have some duplexes, garage apartments, commercial structures, and a place of worship. In our, during our construction years, um, over 70% were built back in the 1920s. Now, the whole area was platted in the 1910s with alleys in the back, streets in the front, most are still brick, 
original hexagon uh, tile uh, sidewalks. And when you look at the architectural styles, it's varied, just like the whole historic Kenwood neighborhood is varied with different types of styles. But what is consistent is the size and scale of the homes to the adjoining homes and into the street and the placement of the homes and the garages on the lot. These we can, and the setbacks, we consider these to be defining characteristics of our neighborhood. And as with most of Kenwood, 60% uh, of the homes are craftsman bungalow. We do have a magnificent uh, uh, craftsman bungalow in our neighborhood that is already designated as a St. Petersburg historic landmark. And this is one of our favorite stops on our monthly Preserve the Burg Historic Kenwood walking tours as we talk about the architectural uh, details of this home. And we hope that again by the fall, hopefully we can resume those monthly tours. Next is what we as a neighborhood affectionately call the Red Brick Church. Uh, it's recognized as a really prominent feature on the northernmost uh, boundary of this proposed district. Here's a picture of four really pretty bungalows that I have to tell you, during the times of our decline back in the, from the 70s through the 2000s, these were all totally derelict, rotten, homes for drug dealers and prostitutes, and in terrible condition. And one might think, just tear it down. But thankfully, uh, the people that bought these and restored them had really saw the value of historic mm -hmm. restoration and preservation. So here's some of the benefits of historic designation that we see. First of all, it discourages demolition. Dozens and dozens of homes have been demolished over the years. And at least with historic designation, there would be some extra attention paid to those requests. We want to encourage, encourage sensitive renovation, we want to ensure compatible construction. Now, again, I mentioned this is our fourth LHD, and we do have a new house uh, that is being constructed, constructed in one of our local historic districts. The design was very carefully reviewed, and we are very happy that it was thoughtfully designed, and it is truly compatible with the rest of the street, and it's a whole lot bigger than other houses on the street, but it is compatible, thankfully. We believe that our property values have gone up because of our historic district, districts. We have close to 500 houses now, if you guys approve this, that are uh, locally historic designated. And mostly we, wanna, we maintain a cohesive, sense of cohesivity. Now we have had a couple of hiccups and I just wanna let you all know about, and that is where some people who have come in new to the neighborhood don't really understand the COA process. They didn't go all the meetings and things that we had. So, you know, it's, there's been some frustrations in trying to understand, and so to assist with that, Historic Kenwood uh, will be including in our welcome baskets, we distributed over 150 welcome baskets last year, we'll include uh, local historic district information, and Laura Duvacott, who'll probably get a thousand phone calls, her phone number, and the email addresses. Uh, President Daryl Gordon, who'll be uh, speaking in a second, uh, he's been having uh, conversations with the local real estate agents and also providing the information, stpete.org, the wealth of information from the preservation site so that they'll understand the design guidelines and things like that, and also have provided uh, Laura's, Laura's information. So it's important we all work together so that people have an uh, ongoing understanding. And we are going to be resuming our in-person meetings where a lot of things happen in terms of questions and answers uh, outside on Seminole Park starting in June. And so, um, with that, our last slide is one that we've presented in every single meeting. Is this, this was reported in the 2003 uh, National Register report where the uh, historian noted that the significance of the composition of the neighborhood is important as the quality of the design is not a result of income. Remember, we were the working class neighborhood, but rather the result of the high-minded planning ideals and inherently good design. Our district illustrates the democracy of design that has been maintained that well now for more than 76 years. So with that, I thank you all and I'd like to ask you to please vote in favor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. Um, there is no registered opponent. No, I do have um, one card. Thank you. Now, will this be part of the, the public hearing? Yes. Okay. So we'll move into public hearing. So Daryl Gordon, come on up. Mr. Gordon, you have been sworn in? I have. And um, does he need to state his address if it's on here? Would you please state your address? I 
and do that. And then you have three minutes. Thank you for being here. All right. My name is Daryl Gordon. I live at 2934 Burlington Avenue North, St. Petersburg. I am the president of the historic Kenwood Neighborhood Association, representing the association for this hearing. And we fully support this application. HK has always supported local designation. And because of the three previous donut designations, we have seen our home values increase. In fact, a restored home today in Kenwood goes for well over $300 a square foot. As mentioned previously, we're very proud of the fact that uh, Historic Kenwood is the neighborhood of the year. I would like to thank the CPPC for its previous support and respectfully request continued support in approving this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Okay, uh, any other, no other public comments? Okay, so we'll move into cross-examination. Ms. Duvicott, do you have any cross-examination? No, thank you. Ms. Gordon? No. Okay, and then uh, any closing remarks? None, thank you. Okay, so we'll move into executive session. Uh, the risk of making it um, look simple, they've done a very good job of preparing the application. And um, I think it, on, on its face, it stands up very well. And I would, uh, be, I would move to recommend it for approval in accordance with the staff report and refer it on to city council. A second. Second from Commissioner Winters. Any other comments before we go to a roll call? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yep, Mr. Roga, Commissioner Roga. Thank you very much. Um, I intend to support the uh, motion on the floor, but I thought I'd ask a couple of kind of process questions, if you will, and maybe Ms. Duvacott can help me with uh, addressing these questions. You noted that there were 213 ballots sent out for the owners of 150 parcels. Does that indicate that some parcels might have one or two owners, might have spouses who received ballots? That's correct. Um, the way that the balloting is done for the local historic districts, we send an indi individual ballot to each owner um, on record, um, and the votes are then counted by parcel. So the only way um, if, if we receive both ballots back and, and th they conflict, there's a yes and a no, then that's recorded as a no for that parcel. Um, if we receive um, one in support and one non-return, then it's a support for the, the parcel. But um, yes, they're all, every owner gets one, but they're recorded by the parcel, so. Thank you. It makes a fun and An additional <laughs> question, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Um, this is a portion of the national district Correct. Are there other portions of the national district still pending designation? Um, there are uh, there are portions of the national district that are not locally designated. There are no other active applications um, or applications, you know, in process that I'm aware of. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, thank the uh, Kenwood uh, Neighbors and Association for this uh, fantastic uh, application that you're bringing before us today. It's uh, a huge historic preservation success uh, story. Uh, I think your point uh, regarding the, uh, I think the quote was the high-minded design of uh, the homes in this neighborhood that occurred without uh, affluent investment uh, years ago uh, is just terrific that you can have high design without necessarily spending a great deal of money. I think that's a very important uh, point here. Uh, and uh, I, I've driven through the neighborhood several times over the past many years, and it's, uh, it's almost, I mean, I don't know what it is, it's magic. It's, it's a feast for the eyes. It takes my... <laughs> 
Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it takes my eyes off the road. <laughs> I'm looking at all, all of the uh, wonderful uh, homes uh, there, and uh, it certainly uh, deserves preservation, and congratulations for what you have done. I know the tremendous amount of time that goes into putting together an application like this and uh, organizing this, and the same uh, with respect to staff. I know that staff spend uh, a great deal of time, and this was a, a very well done uh, staff report, staff uh, effort here. Much appreciated. Commissioner Wanamaker. Um, I also want to uh, definitely, absolutely applaud the the uh, the neighborhood how and how they have helped each other um, come to understand the requirements, the regulations, and continue to help each other. That's that's really wonderful. I also very much appreciate the applicant's comment regarding um, a new home that is being constructed in the neighborhood. In fact, it is larger than maybe some of the existing adjacent homes, but because it has been well designed, it is proportioned, it still can be compatible. So I, I appreciate that you recognize that and mm -hmm. Um, because certainly as, uh, as we move forward, there will be new homes in the neighborhood and they, they will not all be tiny or smaller size bungalows, but as long as they're proportioned and compatible and have a style and design sense, then they can be compatible and increase the property values for everybody. So thank you. Commissioner Winter. Yeah, I just want to commend the neighborhood on the process. Um, you're getting very practiced at this, um, but I really appreciate um, the broad engagement, 19 people um, working as applicants on this one. The phot photographic inventory was really incredible. That's, that's a great asset for the city to have a picture of every one of those buildings today. Um, and also the welcome baskets um, and talking with realtors. You guys are just really models for how to do this, how to do the outreach and how to really get people informed and keep people informed. So um, a lot of appreciation goes to the neighborhood for all your efforts. Yeah, I would second uh, all of what our commissioners have said. I lived in the Kenwood Historic District for two years after moving back from school. I'm very glad that it wasn't $300 a square foot to rent then. I'm very happy for you that it is now. Um, but great job and thank you for make, making and keeping our, our city beautiful. Uh, that said, any other comments? Roll call, please. Sure. Curtis. Yes. Rogo. Yes. Whiteman? Yes. Winters? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Wanamaker? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the hard work. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Item agenda, uh, item number two. Commissioner Wanamaker, please. Number two is city file number 20-902-00111. The request is for the review of a certificate of appropriateness for the replacement of wooden garage doors with metal at a contributing property to a local historic district. The owners are Stephen B. Johnston and Janice L. Johnston, and the address is 335 22nd Avenue Northeast. Okay, Ms. Duvicott from the city. Ms. Duvicott, I noticed you're busy. You're, oh, no, it's not Ms. Duvicott. <laughs> Ms. Perkins. Sorry. <laughs> On mine it says Duvicott, sorry. I apologize. Ms. Perkins, go ahead. Oh, oh it's over on that side. We, tr oh. we traded places. Felt like I was crazy there. I did say Duvicott. Uh. All right, good afternoon. This is Kelly Perkins, Historic Preservationist for the City of St. Pete. We're here today to, for a garage door replacement at 335 22nd Avenue Northeast. Uh, we received no public comments for this item. This property is a contributing resource to the Granada Terrace Local Historic District, as seen in the map above. It is a one-story masonry, masonry vernacular structure with Mediterranean revival details, and it was built circa 1935. 
The property abuts next to an alleyway that ends at 22nd Avenue Northeast, and at some point, a rear garage was added behind the main house. As you can see, the existing wooden doors on the garage uh, have deteriorated. Uh, according to the applicant, he built these doors after purchasing the house when it only had plywood covering the garage opening. The application proposes to retain the existing archway, but install a faux wooden garage doors that are more a modern door. This is an example of the similar type of door that's been installed. It'll also utilize um, hardware that will be in keeping with the house's architectural details. Staff reviewed this application and found that it met all relevant criteria. And therefore, staff is recommending approval with conditions uh, such that the proposed arch opening will be retained as stated in the application. A historic preservation final inspection will be required. All other necessary permits shall be obtained and that this approval will be valid for 24 months beginning on the date of the revocation of the local emergency declaration. So that is the end of my presentation. I try to keep it simple. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. So is uh, Mr. Johnston or Mrs. Johnston? Mr. Johnston, yes. come on up. Welcome, and you have 10 minutes. Thank you. So we bought the house in 99, and it basically was a knockdown. Um, so we put a lot of work into it. There was been many COAs that are associated with the house since then. Um, and when we moved in, it only had plywood, like she said, up there. Um, the owners hadn't taken care of the property at all. And within about a week or so, it was burglarized and broken into and a bunch of stuff was stolen. And at that point, I built the doors that, are, that you see there now that are deteriorated uh, for security purposes. Um, so right now, they're in a bad state of decay, um, need to be replaced. Um, we're getting to the age where we don't want to be building garage doors anymore. So we're looking for a longer term solution. Um, and also uh, bringing that portion of the house up to hurricane code, which the whole other property, rest of the property was brought up to Miami-Dade code when we did the remodel. Um, so what we decided what we'd like to do, we always take a lot of time and uh, research to get the right type of product. And um, we had windows made, especially for the house and that type of thing. Um, so we wanted a garage door that still retains the arch. So we came up with a solution where the door is going to be traditional steel door. Uh, it's going to be faux painted like wood, um, but it's going to be mounted behind the archway. So no modification will have to take place for that. that. So uh, even though the door is square, the square portion of the door will be behind the arch, so it won't be visible from the street or the alley. Um, and that'll offer added security for us and be something that's low maintenance that we don't have to worry about for many years. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, no registered opponent. Do we have any public comments? No. Okay. Moving into cross-examination. Ms. Perkins, any cross-examination? Mr. Johnston? Yes. Wave? Pardon me? No you have the opportunity to cross-examine. No. Oh, no. I don't have any questions. I'm good. Any rebuttal or closing remarks, Ms. Perkins? I don't think any. Thank you. Mr. Johnston, anything? No, sir. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and move into executive session. Commissioner Wanamaker. Uh, I, um, I do want to ask a question regarding how you intend to detail the the opening of the arch after the existing door is taken down. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that there is some wood jam on the jams and on right. the head. So I'm assuming what you're going to do is you're going to take all of that wood jam and head down and then case the openings with stucco so that that arched framed opening will in fact look like the 
cased stucco opening at the gate in your front Okay, front so yard. the... Do you, do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Okay. So the current opening uh, that's original to the house is uh, has a reveal on it that's made out of wood. So that's been um, uh, updated in the last 20 years. It's still wood like the original was. Um, and there's been some new... Uh, pressure treated wood that's behind the stucco that you can't see that have been has been installed in preparation for the mounting of a steel door okay but everything that's visible from the door forward to the alley is still the original um, reveal that's made out of wood and it will retain that it'll be updated in the sense that it'll be painted and freshened up um, but we don't have plans to stucco that opening so it, the rest of the house is trimmed out uh, in wood trim. Um, the arches that you're referring to were done in our major remodel in, in 21, I believe, or 2001. Um, but the whole rest of the house is trimmed out in, in wood that's painted that, um, that blue color. Okay, good. So good. that's what we intend to do. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that you had um, thought that through and you mm -hmm. had... Um, uh, a well-intentioned detail for how you were going to do that. Yeah, so structurally there won't be any modifications. Yep. Okay. Um, the only modification will take place uh, on the interior of the garage. Great, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Winters. Um, th thank you for rehabbing the building um, and I, I'm really kind of intrigued by the method that you're going to use. Um, so I'll move approval of the application as submitted with conditions noted by staff. Second. Second. I just have one quick question. Uh-huh. Is the color going to be the same or will it be the brown? The color will be the brown. It'll be uh, like a faux walnut. Is that the same color as like the windows are? Um, no, it is not at the current time, but our plan is to change all the exterior trim to match the new match door. Match that color. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments before we go to roll call? Okay. Roll call, please. Sure. Gertis? Yes. Rogo? Yes. Whiteman? Yes. Winters? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Wanamaker? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, Mr. Right, Johnson. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Do, thank you very much. Mr. Dima, is, there, is this where you'd like me to take a pause? Um, I think, I mean, I think we can keep going here. I just wanted to make sure that we uh, asked the question here. We've got two recusals, so we're only going to have five voting members on this. So pursuant to city code, uh, the applicant has the right to defer, okay. um, and they'd be able to come back next month um, to, because uh, you need four votes one way or the other. Yep. So um, after these recusals, maybe we can ask uh, the applicant what their pleasure is. I've informed them of this as well. Okay, so the process would be recusing the two commissioners before we read every anything in, correct? Right. You just yeah, I mean, just okay. de declare your conflict real quick and 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 walk off the dais, and then we'll go forth. Yeah. Uh, so I have a commission. Uh, I'm sorry, a conflict due to geographic proximity. I live too close to the property, so I will be recusing myself for this hearing. Same for me. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, commissioners. And so th they've been aware and they've and they want to continue I, I, th that question we're gonna ask that question now to them so if you, he's, he's discuss uh, the attorney's discussing They're it with discussing the client it. right okay, now. okay so we'll just we'll just give them a couple of seconds Is yep. that yep. Okay. And chair um, they have staff has switched Derek Kilborn will be doing this presentation. okay thank you very much Chair, can we have a five-minute recess? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Okay, so we will reconvene our March 2021 CPPC. And I think uh, the applicant has elected to defer. Yes, that's correct. Michael Labby, on behalf of the applicant, we are going to defer uh, to the next available hearing date. Mr. Labby, we apologize for a couple of um, conflicts that put us a little, sh a little short of where you'd like us to be, uh, but we appreciate you being here and we'll, we'll be as diligent as we can next month to make sure we've, we've got the full commission. Not a problem. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we will defer um, the current item and then we'll invite back Commissioner Wolf and Commissioner Winters, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? I want to make sure I'm not breaking any rules. Glad you didn't go too far. <laughs> okay, so moving on, we'll move on to uh, our last city file. Ms. Commissioner Wanamaker, please. So agenda item number four is city file number 21-902-00001. The request is for the review of a certificate of appropriateness for the approval of window replacement at an individually listed local historic landmark. The owners are the Mary Jean Hotel LLC and Elizabeth Street Lofts, Inc. The address is 2349 Central Avenue. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Wanamaker. Uh, city uh, presentations for the city. Perkins. Good afternoon, Kelly Perkins. Ms. Perkins, you have 10 minutes, thank you. All right, um, this application is for window replacement at Mary Jean Hotel. Um, we received no public comment for this item. Um, this is a local historic landmark that was designated in 2000. Um, this map above shows the designation boundary of the property, which includes the building and a parcel east of it. The building was constructed in 1926 in a Mediterranean revival style. Up above is a 1930s photograph that shows uh, the original appearance of the building. Uh, the building used to have uh, wooden windows and storefront systems with one over one windows on the second and third floor floors. This is the building today. Um, this property came before the commission in 2018 for the replacement and all of the um, altered and non-historic storefronts on the first floor. The applicant has redone the storefronts along the Central Avenue facade. Uh, they have not redone the, the storefronts along the 24th Street North application. So they've installed new storefront windows and doors um, in a dark matte finish. The application is proposing today to install single hung white vinyl windows on the second and third floors as shown above. So as you can see, sort of, um, there have been some recent, more modern windows that were installed that have a similar finish to what's being proposed. You can see them above. Staff has concerns about what the lack of cohesion and consistency between the storefronts and windows on the first floor with that dark matte finish with the windows on the second and third floors being a white vinyl finish, which often can be very reflective and shiny. Some other photos showing the um, finish of the recently installed windows and doors. Another photo. So staff reviewed this application and generally found that it meets most of the criteria. Um, the concern was really mostly over the finish of the proposed windows. So staff is recommending approval with conditions that the frames of the replacement windows should have a similar finish and appearance to the frames of the windows, doors, and storefront systems installed on the first floor so that the building's fenestrations have a cohesive and consistent appearance, that the existing openings and trim will be preserved as proposed, historic design materials and forms are to be retained in kind, that windows shall be set back within the wall plane at least three inches to reference common historic configurations that a historic preservation final inspection will be required, 
that all other necessary permits shall be obtained and this approval will be valid for 24 months beginning on the date of the revocation of the local emergency declaration. That is the end of my presentation. I am available for questions if needed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Perkins. Uh, and then representing the owner. Actually, the owner is here. The owner is here. Okay. Uh, welcome. Oh. Oh. Okay. Somebody here for <laughs> the um, applicants contacted us today and stated the architect was going to try to be here. Um, we're not sure if they are here at this point. Do a little discount double check. <laughs> and is there anyone in the greenhouse right now? No. To be honest, we did expect this, the previous item to be a bit long, so we did let them know that there was a historic district yeah. and another item before, but I think they said they would be here around three or... So I don't know if we want to wait a couple minutes. I'm, like I said, it would... Yes, sir? No, I'm no, sorry. Be first in the order that oh, our... Um, so, Kelly, you said maybe like informally you guys were talking about 3 p.m.? Yeah, they, they kind of responded back today. They try to get here and before the meeting... Do you have a, 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 a phone a contact for them? Contact, here, let, let, let's let Mr. I, I have an update for you. Um, I just went downstairs. The property manager is getting checked in right now by security, and he said that the architect is on his way. Okay. So um, there are representatives here for this case that are coming in. Obviously, we probably surprised them with that last case being deferred a little bit. Um, but we should see somebody shortly coming up uh, as a representative for okay. the applicant. I think, it, I think it's okay to have some grace. We went speedy on him. Uh, I think we're looking for a 10-minute recess here, Chair. Okay, so we'll take a 10-minute recess. We'll come back. Come back at 3.07, 3.10? Good. Okay. Three, yeah, 3.10? Three Great, thank you. Three right, thanks. Thank you.
the one over. Let's talk it out. Ain't no reason to shout. What's on your mind? Lay down. Stop this run around. Say what you mean. You know best. I don't want you guess. You're the only one I know, yeah, who has not let go. So tell me how you felt so far, so far from the one you know you are. Ah, you're burning like a cigarette. But See nothing You stand there with your sword just to sow this cord. Keep it up and you'll find the most responding kind. Open your heart, let love be. Trying to hide, yeah. Just enjoy the ride. So tell me how you felt so far, so far from the one you knew you were. Ah, you're burning like a cigarette, babe. You ain't seen the. Shine instead. It beats the end. And if you trust in me, me, then you can be free. Hey, yeah. So tell me how you felt so far from the one you knew. Good night, love. Don't say goodbye, my angel. I'll sing your favorite love. I have never.
Hey, Sarah, Sarah, and it'll be all right. Hey, your spear is so high. I'll be peace. And through a thousand years, darling, I love you more and more. Hey, the lonely days fade to me now. The stars dance in glow. Mountains Sweet good night. 
think the agenda item has already been read in, correct? Yep. So, Ms. Perkins, for, for the, or did we do city? Uh, we've, we've already done city, sorry. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay, so we'll invite uh, the owner or architect up. If you could just state your name, your address, and have you been sworn in? Yes, I was just sworn in. Great. My name is Dennis Lang. I'm the architect of the project, and my address is 2034th Avenue North. Um, I apologize. I didn't hear what City said, but I have read the report. I think the issue at hand is the issue of uh, the white vinyl um, on the material selection. Uh, we did do an alternative bid for matching materials to what we did on the downstairs on the first floor recently for the, you know, the improvements we've been doing. Um, the bid came back almost nearly twice as much. It went from being a, a $75,000 job to 140. Um, that's a huge cost increase for us to be able to overcome there. Um, one of the bigger issues that we wanted to raise to the city's perspective that isn't accounted for in the COA application process is interior improvements that the owners make into the building to rehabilitate the structure. Those don't come in as part of historic because we only regulate the exterior, but there's a substantial amount of improvements we've been making to the interior for fire safety reasons, for mechanical reasons. And while we don't have that accounted for in the budget here in front of the city, that is a large cost of our budget. And we just don't wanna lose the opportunity to continue to make valued improvements to the building that are necessary for historic buildings to remain viable. Um, additionally, we also have a current COA, which we are still working to perform against, which in the package you see the construction documents which are in process at the city. We are still working to complete that. We had a hang up here at the city when the voided COA happened over the summer and some hurdles. But we are in process with the city to complete that work. It's a substantial improvement in the courtyard. And that material is actually gonna be white, you know, in finish also. So we do feel that there's a comparable finish, you know, going on between the balance of the building at the hotel use, you know, upper floors, and the use in the, the courtyard, which is also an ancillary accessory to the hotel. So we've done some considerable thought on this. Um, we do appreciate, you know, the opportunity of staff to think about using the same material. We thought about that. It's just a cost reason for the rest of our work. We hope you can appreciate that. Sorry, my voice is a little. Oh, you're okay. We rushed you. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, if there's any questions that I could address, I'd be more than happy to. I think we'll have to wait on questions. Is that, is that the case, Mr. Dima? Pardon me? I think Commissioner Wolf has a question, but we'll wait for executive session to do that, correct? You can ask questions whenever you want. There you go. Thank yep. you. <laughs> Learning as we go. Mr. Wolf. Uh, yeah, my... Mr. Wolf, excuse me. Um, I'm not... I, I remember the dark material from the original application downstairs. I don't remember what it was. Um, I think it was more of a commercial type application. But in looking at the application today, I saw that it appears that that same window from this manufacturer is available in several colors. And I'm wondering if one of the darker colors might be compatible or if that would be, again, uh, looking at it on my screen, I couldn't tell how different it might be. But I know they were black and there was a stone or there was a dark, some darker colors and I'm wondering if any of those would be same cost. And also um, if there was a dark color available at similar cost, what staff's um, input would be on whether that color was preferable to white. Certainly Mr. Wolf, um, I, I know Ms. Perkins, I'm sure you have some input on that as well. I'd be happy to hear your input yeah. first. Kate, do you mind bringing up my presentation? Yeah, so um, when I was talking about a similar finish, uh, don't worry, Kay, I can do it. Okay. Um, when I was talking about a similar finish, I looked up the windows that were proposed and saw that they were offered in a dark bronze and a black, um, which this is in there. I think part of the issue of white vinyl is that when you have vinyl, which has a you know very smooth finish combined with white, which reflects light, it creates a pretty very shiny and reflective appearance, but when you do the dark, it tends to, dark vinyl, it tends to give a much more matte finish. This is another photo of the, of the black. I couldn't find, I found a photo of the dark bronze after my presentation was done, so I wasn't able to include it. So 
I think in terms of creating that visual consistency, it can be achieved through using this window with the dark colors because they tend to have a more of a matte appearance. Using a different window frame brand that has that matte appearance or even just simple paint. Paint creates a matte and a more traditional appearance as well. So I think any of those are options that um, I think would help create a more consistent appearance for the building. So, so I just clarify, um, the bronze or the black you think might be more compatible in terms of what what staff would like to see in turn on the on the elevation of the building. yeah when i found photos of this window manufacturer installed like actually installed taken with the black and the dark bronze um, they tended to have more of a, a matte appearance in real life okay so like then my question for the owner would be is there um did, would the owner have an issue with that? Is there a significant difference? Well, so we did we did look into the difference from that vendor for this these windows, you know, in terms of using a different trim package uh, to use the darker selection. Unfortunately, in the vinyl that Ms. Perkins is referencing, they don't make a darker vinyl pat product. It is only an anodized metal, uh, which is, as you accurately identified, a more commercial installation, which is what we use down at the ground floor level. Those are nano doors that slide all the way open and commercial storefront. The Existing historic nature of that building has a lot of technical problems because the building has not been maintained properly over time. We've got a lot of issues around the frames for each of these individual windows that are going to necessitate that they're being handled on a case by case basis by our crew of contractors that are going to work with us. So this wasn't just an issue of us simply selecting the appropriate window. It was also an issue of finding a window that was wind code appropriate, that was acceptable for our budget, that could meet the requirements of individual flexibility in these openings because uh, as staff accurately identifies these are not the original windows those were removed a long time ago and these were replaced and have caused water damage in our walls so we we, we have more costs that we're trying to kind of keep in check here and like i said when we did price this out at the request when we saw the, the staff report it was the difference of seventy five thousand dollars on our budget line to 140. so it, it's not a oh it's ten thousand dollars more it's double um the other challenge that I, one of the options that Ms. Perkins just outlined was potentially painting the material, you know, to match. We you know we still have to do the trim around each of these windows to match the historic trim, which was part of what our COA also was requesting us permission to do. Uh, we can't touch the outside of these buildings without doing anything through this process. Um, I, so I'm sorry, I, I wasn't, uh, and now I was looking at the report online and was a, basically a screenshot of the manufacturer's catalog. And so what it looked like to me was that those vinyl windows were available in darker colors. You're saying those that in that manufacturer, the vinyl windows are not available dark? No, they, when we talked to them, it was an anodized metal product, which is okay. the same as what we're using downstairs. So that screenshot of that catalog page that showed dark, that was, when, not, that was not vinyl. This is my owner rep. He just walked up to me and said, when we talked to them, we called them with the same manufacturer we got the same bid from. They told us it's a metal to match. Okay, because I know, I know that there are vinyl manufacturers now who are creating uh who do have dark windows available i mean you know and like i said it's also a process of making sure it's wind code approved yes you know and that we have the necessary you know stuff that we're working with in terms of being able to put it into the frame of the building that we have okay that was my question i appreciate it yeah my question is for ms perkins hey, go back to the original picture the very first picture in your in your uh Presentation. Do you mean the that one postcard? Right yes. Okay, so the first floor, the storefront is green. The second and third floors, the windows are trimmed in white. I can't quite tell what the, the trim is white, but what color is the windows? Well, this is an artist depiction, so the artist can add whatever color they want to postcards. Oh, so that's not a. a but. The windows were all originally wood and would have been painted. And when, like I said, when you add a paint, that creates a pretty standard finish and a consistency visual appearance, even if it's a different color. Okay, but but the I have vinyl windows, and the the vinyl the shine goes away after a while. Anyway, at least in my windows, it did. I am not sure I, I find that there's a, a pretty significant difference between traditional windows and vinyl window finishes 
I mean, this is an issue of windows that are a story above ground level. I mean, this is really only an issue of people that are viewing this building from a block away or, you know, across the street. You know, and the, the separation of a visual glare from the glass and the trim for vinyl versus a, a matte material is going to be, in my mind, an inconsequential contribution here. You know, to, to ask for us to overcome a double of our budget, it's pretty tough. Mr. Demon, did you have something? No, I just uh, want to make sure that we're not having additional testimony if it's not in response to a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, Commissioner Wanamaker. Um, I do have a question for the applicant. Why did you choose a dark bronze anodized aluminum for the storefront on the ground floor? Certainly. Um, it, it accurately identified. It's a commercial application. It's more appropriate for where the pedestrian is going to come in contact with that material. I, I don't disagree with what Ms. Perkins is raising. To now, why did vision. you choose dark bronze? On the ground floor? It's, it just gives a more commercial application. I agree that it reads more commercially appropriate. And at the ground floor where pedestrians are traversing in this district, that's an appropriate finish. And it's consistent throughout the ground level of the building. Commissioner Michaels, did you have a question? Just to uh, clarify, uh, was uh, painting the frame an option? Was that an option that you were offering? Yes. And what is your response to that? I, I would certainly entertain that option, sir. I'm not going to rule it out. I would just want to verify with the vendor that it's not going to damage the material or any of the warranties in place. But I wouldn't disagree with that option if it was afforded to us. Any other questions? OK. Thank you, Mr. Lane. We'll move into the public hearing. I think we have one. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan, uh, have you been sworn in? Yes, sir. If you could just state your name and your address, and then you have three minutes. Thank you for being here. Hi, I'm Thomas Sullivan. I live in the Mari Jean Hotel, 2349 Central Avenue, in room apartment 211 on the side street of 24th Street. I urge the uh, CPPC to speedily approve this application. Uh, I understand that the original windows on the second and third floor, if you can just visualize 24 apartments, their efficiencies, private, private bathroom, small studios, 24 on each floor. I've lived there for a year and a half, tenant in good standing. I understand that the neighborhood we're in is changing it's becoming more of a nightlife destination. There's the speakeasy, which is right under my windows, that, that's open six nights a week till 2 a.m. The uh, Sophia's Wine Bar and Kitchen is open till 10 p.m. And the new club, The Cocktails, is going to be open till 2 or 3 a.m., probably seven nights a week. The main concern, my reason for urging the approval, is for the noise reduction ability that the new windows will provide because the speakeasy has 60, 60 people occupancy. On a Friday or Saturday night, there's 75 people right below my window talking loudly at full volume, and my sleep is being affected. So I understand that there will be changes in the building, that there's been a lot of careful attention to detail, and I just ask that the committee speedily approve this so that we can all continue to get good night's sleep at the historic Mari Jean Hotel. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you for your service as well. Um, okay, so we'll move into cross-examination. Ms. Perkins, any cross-examination? Always, thank you. Mr. Lane, any cross-examination for the city? Yes, sir, I appreciate your time today, thank you. Okay, and then any closing remarks or, or rebuttal, Ms. Perkins? Just that this has been, as the applicant stated, a really large renovation and rehabilitation project of this property. And I think it's really important when you undertake a project for a local landmark to think about the building as a whole and not just certain pieces going back and forth. But like I said, in terms of finish, paint would certainly, I think, be an option. It would actually be a more traditional finish for the building anyway, rather than unpainted vinyl. Um, thank you. If you have any more questions. Please Thank you very much, Ms. Ask. Perkins. And then, uh, Mr. Lane, any closing remarks or rebuttal? 
Uh, we would certainly entertain an, op an opportunity to investigate the paint as a finish to match the exterior grade uh, level, um, as staff has recommended. I think that's an acceptable middle ground that we could look into for you guys. Um, and also to Ms. Perkins' comment of thinking of the building holistically as an entire entity, not just as a piecemeal configuration. You know, I, I do think we're doing that in good faith. Uh, we're executing a beautiful, uh, you know, addition in the courtyard, which has also previously been approved by this committee. Um, and we look forward to executing that in good faith and, and completing this vision of the building and bringing it back to its, you know, opportunity to contribute to the city. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Lane. Okay, so we'll move into executive session. Any questions or comments? Yeah, um, Commissioner Wolf. Yeah, I just was doing a quick search. I know um, there are some companies that are offering dark vinyl, and we only deal in impact products, so I understand your issues with getting impact rated product. Um, I guess my only question was, uh, obviously with the scale of windows, I understand you are, it's, it's a, a major budget item, but I'm wondering, have you checked any of the other uh, vinyl window manufacturers to see if they have available darker colors that might satisfy staff requirements? Um, I, I would be more than happy to address that to you, honestly. Part of the requirements of the submission for this request is that we have to select a product and provide a lot of information on the front end mm -hmm. before we have an opportunity to hear any comments about what may or may not be a problem. Understanding now that this trim is a major issue, if we had an opportunity to have the approval and represent an alternative product that is more in line with the vision of staff and city, we would absolutely do so. The challenge we have is losing time. Mm -hmm. I can't afford to not have an approval today to come back in maybe a month or two if COVID explodes again, um, six months, and maybe not have it again. I would absolutely go forward with good faith and continue to do so with the city with the opportunity to present you a more acceptable product that we can also budget accordingly. If that's I, acceptable and like a conditional, yes, we can do that. We will, we will do that in good faith for the city. I, I, yes, I understand the impact of the it, it's just a, it's really a sequence of operations challenge sir in the sense that we had to have a lot of documentation to provide on the front before that process takes place we didn't have any feedback yeah because i would also thinking about the you know even if we were to say something about painting that would incur an extra probably fairly substantial increase in cost that may you may be able to find a, an alternative window so my thought again understanding the problems of an ongoing project and the, the benefits of trying to actually get the historic building protected with proper windows. My thought would be to see if we could come up with a um, motion that might allow for uh, the good faith effort on the part of the applicant to uh, see if there is a, an alternate window um, to say, a, 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 Again, we prove it with some kind of condition that the applicant or work with staff to see if there is an alternative uh, darker colored vinyl window that might be um, more appropriate uh, uh, for staff for the building. Um, Mr. And that is there we, a way to do that through the conditions of approval? I tend to like something that's measurable. Um, so... I have, I have an option. Uh, uh, why doesn't somebody ask... Well, I mean, well, I have, I have an alternative way to solve here. this for us. Um, we still have to permit the work with the city. Mr. Lang, I think a question needs to be asked so there's not additional testimony and additional time given that other people haven't had. I understand. So uh, it, it, does somebody want, is there a question to Mr. Yeah. Lang? Thank you, Commissioner um, Wolf. Well, uh, again, trying to find something that we can quantify. Um, do you have a... I'm not sure how we can. I'm not sure how we can get a question that will be measurable. Um, I'm assuming there are other sources, and I'm wondering if you have a thought on how you might be able to uh, offer staff a, a different window option. I do. Um, in the process of permitting this work at the city with the building department, once we had the COA, that's the first check that we need to secure. Uh, I'd be more than happy to address on that permitting process the way we plan to provide for the darker trim solution via a window material solution in the vinyl itself or a paint. I can measure that onto the permit and just state it on the plans, the solution, if Mr. that's acceptable. Demon, would that be a acceptable so, conditional? Yeah, I mean, I think we're looking right now at 
the applicant is agreeing to the darker color and just wants a couple of different options to get there. And as long as city staff agrees that there's a couple different ways to skin this cat and still make them, you know, make them happy too, then I can see a, a pretty easy condition coming up based on what the only way Lang that I would just said. Just quantify it on my end is if we can say within a certain range of budget acceptability. You know, like if I've already presented you a budget that's of a certain value that can't we quantify, it's not gonna be this extra $100,000 cost no matter what. Because that would be my, again, that's where my concern comes in for my client. I have to understand that the interests of the city against the interest of making sure I can get it done. We're, we're not allowed to consider yeah. cost. Um, I, I, well, I, I, know that, I know that hurts. Well, I mean, it's just, it, for me, I have to, I must, I have to. Otherwise, we won't be able to do it at all. And, and you're not able to do it if, if you need a modification of the condition. I mean, well, we're right back to score zero. So, so it's, it's, it sounds like it would be a condition of approval to work with city staff rather than come all the way back here. Yeah. Um, when you have a, a range of options, you know, I. I mean, we can put in some language to, you know, to the extent feasible, but I mean, I, I really don't like to kneecap our, our conditions like that. Um, and just, Derek, do you have an update as to like, what, what's city staff's appetite here for? I was waiting for you to send it over to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, yeah. Um, I, I think the two primary issues are the darker finish whether that's, or one, one issue is the darker finish, whether that's achieved by a change in the window manufacturer or through some paint application. Um, and that's what would be important to us. So if that could be articulated in the condition, that would be the prevailing and predominant issue. And then if there are changes in the manufacturer, that's something we can certainly deal with at the permitting level, the we think. Um, and I don't know if, if Kelly has anything that she would like to add to that. No, I mean, that's that's fairly a somewhat standard that often people will submit a window ma manufacturer and after doing the pricing, they end up going with a different ma window manufacturer. It's just having the same type of window, same operation, same, you know, material, same finish is normally, that's pretty standard. But I think there's a an agreement to doing the, the, the kind of finish that we're looking for that is closer to matching the first <clears throat> floor. Window. So, Mr. Lane, it, it's... It sounds like you have the leeway to change the manufacturer as long as you change the color. Well, and again, I... Would that be acceptable? Well, it's, it's going to be acceptable as long as the budget comes back in. If the material is always going to be more expensive, it's going to be hard for us to budget that into it. I understand the considerations of city, but... I think paint is something I can get my owner to overcome because we had a conversation about it. I completely understand where you're coming from, but unfortunately, we don't, I don't think we have anything to do, we can't have anything to do with that. We can tell you. Well, then I would, then I would have to unfortunately say that we would have to defer back to what we've submitted if that's the only way that's, that city can confidently render us a decision at this time. Good on Commissioner, you. Commissioner Wanamaker and then Commissioner Michaels. Um, I'm, uh, Mr. Lang, the letter that you um, submitted dated January 7th, item number seven, item number seven states, the new windows will improve the clarity of the facade by unifying the window treatment to the entire building and providing for a singular treatment to their trim and finish. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. When you say entire building, I take that to mean the first floor as well, the Understood. ground floor as well. So I appreciate that. Oh, what, hold, what, on, my, hold on, Mr. Mr. So, Lane. Please let Commissioner Wanamaker finish. And and I do agree with staff that consistency throughout the ground floor and the fir the second and the third floor is important. And um, I know that, you know, it, you initially chose the, the dark bronze on the ground floor a couple years ago or whenever that was, um, but because of the, 
because of the building being on the register and being such a significant historic building, um, my, my opinion, there, there really should have been a master plan or a master vision going forward, knowing that in the future those second and third floor windows would ultimately be, ultimately be replaced. So it's, it's really for me, you know, you, you can't take it piecemeal. The whole building has to be looked at as a master plan, a master vision. So, and, and your, your own statement kind of reiterates that. So that's, that I, I'm, I'm going to agree with staff on this and, and um, ensure that there is consistency in color at a minimum um, in those newer windows. Okay, so may I respond? But, Mr. Lane, you have to be asked a question, so I'm sorry. So in, unless there's a question, we have to, I have to continue to let the commissioners make their comments, okay? I, I, I totally understand your zeal. Well... She misinterpreted my own words. It's kind of unfair. Commissioner Michaels. I, I'm trying to find a way to uh, restate the conditions here, which will capture the spirit of cooperation that I think I'm hearing between the uh, applicant and, and staff. And maybe a simple way of doing this would be just to insert the words in that first condition there after have a similar finish agreeable to staff. And staff and the applicant can take it from there. Uh, Mr. Lane, if those words were added to the conditions of approval, how would you feel about that? Are you, which, sir, which respectfully, which staff are you referring to? Are you referring the to city the building department staff, staff the or the historic staff, department? The preservation staff. I believe they have an opportunity to review during permitting, which would be acceptable. If that's the, the caveat in the language, that's acceptable. Thank you. Commissioner Winters. Question, um, are you using the ad valorem tax program given the investment you're making in this building? Uh, There's a I'm great- not, I'm not privy to the way that they operate their taxes, ma'am. Uh, that would um, address your concerns about cost if you were um, participating in that program, which I'm sure that Ms. Perkins can provide the owner with that information. I'm sure that if that's an opportunity that would, if that was presented to them, they would take advantage of it. I believe that's in that, uh, uh, allowable as a result of the historic process on a historic building. I think you get, you can apply for an ad valorem exemption on the value added to the building. I think it's 10 years. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm not the accountant, I'm the architect. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Commissioner Rogo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just curious, the first floor improvements, specifically the bronze window frames, door frames, were those changes made after the building was designated? Yes, the building was designated in 2000. The storefronts were installed in 2020, 19. 2019. I believe they came to us for a COA. On so that. then we've already approved one change in the color because it was originally, as best we could tell from the postcard, a greenish. I mean, it could have been, it was probably painted a myriad of different colors over the years. Um, and then at some point the storefronts were changed and then they came in to start, yeah, for the new storefronts, which it was approved to have a non-metallic or painted finish. That was the approval for the storefront. So we are maybe being consistent if we are talking in terms of non-metallic and painted. And so I think that might be in keeping with Commissioner Michael's suggestions as to how we might amend the condition. Okay. Thanks, sir. Any other questions or comments? Somebody like to take a stab at a motion? Um, I can try, or Commissioner Michael sounded like he had some semblance of a word. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll move uh, approval of the uh, staff recommended conditions of approval uh, with the insertion after a similar finish uh, agreeable to city staff 
added in the first condition. Second. So, uh, Commissioner Michaels, was your intent there for a motion on the entirety of the application yes. with that condition amended? With that modification, yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Uh -uh. Any questions or comments before we vote? Yeah, Commissioner. But if this doesn't pass, then we've just stopped the whole application if this amendment doesn't pass. Correct. So I think we need to separate them. It's, you know, you have that option. Um, I tend to agree that the cleanest way to do it is to make a motion for each amendment to a condition and then make the motion on the main as amended. Um, but the, the parliamentarian rules allow you to do it either way. So, so. Uh, so we we could amend that motion or the, that motion could be amended to to vote on the amend the amendment to the condition. It, it would be my opinion that if Commissioner Michaels would rescind the motion, it would be cleaner to do it that way and then right. make a motion to amend condition number one and then a subsequent motion on the main as amended. All right, I, I agree to rescind the motion. Okay, thank you. So now, would you like to make another motion? Um, just amending condition number one, as you stated before, Dr. Michaels? All right, I uh, move to amend condition number one by inserting the uh, words agreeable to staff after a similar finish. Second. We have a second. Roll call, please. Or any questions or comments before we go Mr. to Mr. Chairman, please could we please on. read the entire condition then as amended? The frames of the replacement windows should have a similar finish agreeable to staff, agreeable to city staff, and appearance to the frames of the windows, doors, and storefront systems installed on the first floor so that the building's fenestrations have a cohesive and consistent appearance. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? My apologies, Commissioner Rogo. No, that's all right. Thank you. Okay, let's have a roll call vote, please. Gertis? Yes. Rogo? Yes. Whiteman? Yes. Winters? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Wanamaker? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. So we would now need a motion on the entire application. So I would move approval of the application with the amendment just, to, just passed uh, for, all right in accordance with staff report and in accordance with the amendment just passed. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. Second. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions or comments before we go to a vote? Okay, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Curtis? Yes. Rogo? Yes. Whiteman? Yes. Winters? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Michaels? Yes. Wanamaker? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Mr. Lane, thank you. I hope uh, you and the city can get this worked out and everybody's happy. It's a beautiful building. I know it'll continue to be a beautiful building. Thank you. Okay, uh, any announcements from city? No. Mr. Dima, anything we need to know? I have nothing for you, Chair. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do we have a... Uh, what was the result? Oh, the result. If you wanted, if you had questions about the rehearing, now would be the time to, to do that. I did have a question since we, I thought we had. I'll withdraw my yeah. motion to adjourn. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious yeah. as to what was the result, what the city staff worked out with the applicant. Sure, thank I understand, you. right? Well, there was testimony at last month's hearing that uh, the applicant had obtained a permit from the city. And that seemed to weigh heavy on your decision as reflected in each of your comments. Specifically mine, yes. Yes, after the hearing, we looked into that issue and we were not able to identify any permit having been issued on the roof replacement. And so for that reason, uh, we filed to have that request for rehearing cons considered by this commission today. And if you um, took action to have that rehearing, then we would have brought it back next month based on that uh, new evidence uh, and discovery. So 
Uh, when we reported back to the applicant, the applicant indicated that time was most critical, and so they uh, essentially withdrew their request for a metal roof, replaced it with a shingle roof, which is an administrative uh, review procedure, and that certificate of appropriateness was issued by our staff yesterday. So they are now approved, um, and we'll be replacing that roof with a shingle roof. So because of that, obviously, there was no reason for a rehearing request today. Thank you. Wonder what he did with the metal roof. <laughs> Wasn't it sitting in his driveway? It was at the. I, I don't. Was I don't know if it was delivered, but it was at the yard. Right. And what okay. he said about pre-cutting certainly could have been true because I had had a conversation on a similar roof, that, uh, like literally the day before, and they were talking about pre-cutting because they couldn't do the rollout in a in the space they had on site. So I, it seemed that he. It, I had no reason to question what he was saying at that time. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kilmore. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Commissioner Rogo, thank you. Second. Commissioner Wolf, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. See you next month. Thank you.